Good evening, Bahamas. Coming up tonight, the preliminary GDP figures are released for 2015. Police investigating the discovery of a body on Grand Bahama and breast cancer survivors walk in paradise. Welcome to our news. I'm Christina McNeil. Thanks for joining us. Topping news tonight, the preliminary figures for the 2015 gross domestic product are in, reflecting a decline in GDP real growth rate based on constant prices. According to the Department of Statistics, the constant prices take into account the impact of inflation and is more useful in studying trends in economic growth. Upon closer examination of that figure, you see that the GDP real growth rate also declined based on the provisional data from 2014, which recorded a decline of 0.52%. However, officials from the Department of Statistics stopped short of describing this as an indicator of a recession. I wouldn't want to say that. I could just give you the figures as we've established them. We don't want to classify that as a recession. GDP is measured in current and constant prices, with current market prices reflecting price levels and currency values, factoring in current inflation, and determining the total value of the products and services produced in a particular year. According to current prices for 2015, the GDP had positive growth of 2.74 percent. Officials say a number of factors would have affected GDP, including a high unemployment rate of 14.8 percent. A number of factors affected the GDP in 2015. That possibly played a part, but you also had the high unemployment rate that would have affected household ability to purchase. Despite some declining figures, TurnQuest says there is room for growth in the economy. There yeah. is room for, you know, development. As these developments are complete, uh, completed and come online and stuff, there's promises for increase in the future if they are able to operate the way they ought to. Well, meanwhile, the release of the preliminary GDP figures has also revealed a $293 million decline in non-residential construction. Acting Director of Statistics Leona Wilson says that 42.1% decline may have been affected by the halt of construction on Bahamar. Bahamar was a major infusion in the Bahamian economy. It was a major project. And any major project into, into an economy like the Bahamas would have an effect you know, on, on the economic activity within in the country. However, growth has been registered in ongoing residential construction projects, which has seen growth of 26.1 million, or 15.4 percent. Other major trends of note in the preliminary statistics include a decline in exports and imports between 2014 and 2015. That would cover you, as you know, our major um, export commodities like salt, um, um, crawfish, chemicals. chemicals, that kind of thing. So we've had a reduction in those in those items that have been exported. Maybe companies have reduced their production of certain commodities for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. I don't want to speculate too much on that. Um, as far as crawfish or um, other seafood products, there's been a slight reduction in those items also. I don't know if it has anything to do with supply at this time, but there's also been a reduction in that particular commodity also. The National Accounts 2015 report with detailed tables of this data will be available by the end of May on the Bahamas government website. In other news, police on Grand Bahama are investigating the death of a man on that island. Pakisha Parker Edgecombe has the story. Shortly before 9 this morning, the body of a man was discovered just off Queens Highway near Minga Road and Forest Avenue, a busy auto mechanics and light industrial district, also the home for the Rand Memorial Hospital's EMS station. The dead male, believed to have been in his early 50s, was reportedly last seen on Wednesday night. Police um, received a phone call around 8.45 a.m. this morning um, of a report that a, a male was found. Um, disease in a white jeep. He is known in the area and he, he um, more or less is the, um, the eyes and the ears of the area and he watches over certain areas around here. Upon the arrival of our news team, authorities had already removed the body from the white jeep seen here, which witnesses said was his home. I mean, he didn't move. I always see the blanket moving around in the morning. It didn't move this morning. But I saw a bunch of flies over it. And then look at it, 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 it
and, and let him check it out. And he saw he wasn't moving. So he, quit, he went over there and they ran and he brings some of them over there and they check him out. And that was it. While police have yet to officially identify the dead male, he is said to have been well known and well liked by all in the area. Well, honestly, he was a very nice person. He used to walk around, right, to wash cars sometimes for the airport and stuff like that. While police not suspected at this time in the matter, however, an autopsy will be performed to determine the exact cause of death. Reporting for our news on Grand Bahama, I'm Pakisha Parker Edgecum. Thanks, Pakisha. Well, our news would like to clarify a story you watched here last night. The story related to horses at the Bahamas Association for Social Health, or BASH. The horses you saw here on our news were not the horses referred to in the court case. A little later, the Bahamas Humane Society will actually weigh in on the care of animals in the country. In other news, Attorney General Allison Maynard Gibson is responding to calls from opposition leader Dr. Hubert Minnis for her to do her job and prosecute those members of parliament who failed to disclose their assets. During the FNM's Golden Gates candidate launch, Minnis asserted that no one is above the law and vowed to make the Public Disclosure Commission independent. Well, Maynard Gibson says there is a process and the authorities responsible for taking action have not done so. Started this interview by speaking and celebrating that the, the, the rule of law is in the Bahamas and there's a process by which all of these things happen. Um, I can say that this process has not commenced from the proper people from whom it should commence. It has been reported that several MPs have failed to file their disclosures. Meanwhile, the controversial injunction handed down by Supreme Court Justice Indra Charles prohibiting MPs from disclosing emails belonging to members of the environmental group Save the Bays remains in place. A hearing on the substantive constitutional motion brought in relation to the issue will be heard on May 12th and 13th. Although the Attorney General moved to have that injunction set aside, the parties agreed today to proceed to the substantive hearing. Members of Save the Bays are seeking a declaration that they have a right to privacy under Article 23 of the Constitution and that it is an entrenched fundamental right which trumps parliamentary privilege. They are asking the judge for a permanent injunction restraining any further breaches and an order against Fox Hill MP Fred Mitchell and Marathon MP Jerome Fitzgerald to disclose the source of those emails.